So that uh, those were, were the first two. Yeah. Where whereabouts in uh, Traverse City was that at? Andrew Christine actually asked that. So yeah. So we're like just uh, Grand Traverse Bay. We're like two miles outside of downtown, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. So we got lucky. They introduced some like uh, serious restrictions. I don't even know if they're allowing short term rentals anymore. We got a, basically what happened is like two weeks before we were set to close on the second one. Yep. Austin has a good friend who lives in Traverse City who called him and was like, basically, Austin, <laughs> call your mortgage broker and have them close as fast as possible. That it's going before the city that they're trying to like ban short term rentals because there's getting to be too many. So I called mm -hmm. my mortgage broker and was like, we, we, I don't care what fees I have to pay. I don't give a shit what happens. We need to close this immediately. Yep. We turned in the application the day. Yeah, so. It's, it's, yeah. So I called them and was like, hey, this needs to be done immediately. We closed. And long story short, we got approved. Like, I don't know what it was, but it was somewhere around a week before those restrictions took place. So I don't know if you can even do that in Traverse City proper anymore. But mm -hmm. we got grandfathered in. And as long as we don't let our short term rental license lapse, we're okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So, you, first so you do have to. So you do have to have a license in order to do that. Yeah. So what does exactly. that consist of? Yeah. So anybody who wants to do short-term rentals, they should be working with a real estate agent or broker who's like familiar with short-term rentals because okay. there are a lot of places who restrict or ban them altogether. Um, mm -hmm. So you need to, like, you personally need to take the responsibility. Any city you're looking in, you need to personally call the city or township and mm -hmm. see if they allow them. Um, like some places like Nashville, I don't know what the deal is. We were, we were looking all over the US before we decided to buy in Traverse. Um, mm -hmm. I think Nashville was like really shutting them down hard. So you had to go outside of Nashville. There's a lot of places with restrictions. So I think it's different everywhere. We just had to like turn in a bunch of information, basically pay a fee. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. And all sorts of, yeah, it was, it was hey. simple. But we had to do the, it. The government's got to get their cut. <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. I I think what it, what it is is the uh, the lobbyists from the hotels are, are are pushing hard. So against that, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. totally. We're totally cutting another market share for sure. So yeah. Sure so um, I believe it was yes, Andrew. Again, he said East Bay Township has been nuts. Uh, people who bought for short-term rentals are ending up ending up stuck with a 300k plus property properties they yeah. can only rent for 1600 a month for long term it's crazy oh i believe it yeah so, I think we're, te we're technically in east bay township to be honest oh really i'm just so grateful that didn't happen to us yeah so on that yeah. can you can you run across how do you run your numbers for short-term rental versus uh, long term and how do you figure out the the price uh the the mm -hmm. yeah. offer price mm -hmm. yeah so uh there are so many caveats to this i guess the first really important thing for people is i like to have multiple exit strategies on every deal right okay so yep. uh even if i know i'm gonna short term rental i i want to have like additional options so i guess that's the first note that's a personal thing but i think it's a good thing for everybody to do I knew that even with this first Traverse City house, if I couldn't short term run it, then I would still like to go there with my family. So that made me feel really good. Um, but okay. to get back to like basic to answering your specific question, yep. what I do is I'll pull up a property and then what I'm going to do is I will whatever figure, you know, if it's listed on the market or if it's off market, mm -hmm. you know, if it's off market, I'm going to figure out the purchase price. Um, and then I'm going to go into AirDNA or BMB Town. I use AirDNA, um, and because I'm a real estate, I'm a real estate broker. I have access to that for free through that. Okay. Box. So you're, it's usually a paid service for most people. You might be able to find a bigger pockets link where you get it cheap, but I'm going to take the purchase price. I'm going to take the link to the house. I'm going to go to AirDNA. I'm going to type that exact address into AirDNA. I'm going to put bedrooms and bathrooms in, and it's going to spit out basically like comps. Okay. So it's going to say, Hey, this house is projected to make $59,000 a year. Mm -hmm. based on these houses around it. So I like that it's actual data being scraped off of Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb. I feel good about mm -hmm. that, right? So it's not just like an algorithm. I mean, it's an algorithm projecting, but it's using actual numbers. Yeah. Um, and then basically what I'm going to do is 
I'll divide that, um, you know, across 12 months. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm not going to have even occupancy where I live. I'm, we're in Michigan. It's going to be very yep. cyclical, pro probably about 68% occupancy, but I'm trying to get a, just an idea on a monthly basis. So mm -hmm. they, they just say it's 60K so we can have an easy math problem. I know that's an average of five grand gross per month. Mm -hmm. I'll go into Zillow. I'll do the <laughs> scroll down to the mortgage calculator. And for me, we put 25% down on those things. Okay. Um, you can talk to your mortgage broker, whoever that is. I think you all should call Brick Financial because they're amazing. But you might be able to get your first one on a second home loan, which is 10%. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, whatever your down payment is, I'm plugging into that mortgage calculator and getting an estimate from Zillow. So let's just make it easy and call it 2,500. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other important thing that everybody should know here is I am estimating future taxes as well because it's non-homesteaded. So I guess look up M Michigan property tax estimator. Mm -hmm. I put in the city, I put in the school district. The SCV is going to be half of the purchase price. So if the house yep. is 300K, the SCV, whatever it's going to be, or they assess value is going to be like 150. And that'll give me updated taxes. So just make sure you have updated taxes in that mortgage calculator for Zillow. All right. Yeah. And that's actually, even whether you purchase a new house or a short term rental, you need to do that. And I think totally. that's where a lot of people make the mistakes with running their numbers is they don't take yes. into account the updated taxes, Tax. you know, yes. so it, because you could have, I think a lot of agents don't even know. Yeah. No. Yeah. The pre, the thing is, is the previous owner could have owned it for 50 years and they're paying a thousand dollars in tax. And, and when you buy yeah. it, it's going to go up, it's going to be uncapped and it's going to go up to six grand ta in taxes. Who knows? You know totally so yeah um all right i didn't want to interrupt you go ahead yep no that's okay that's all right so say my average which i know i'm not going to get every month but average across the year five grand gross all right and i know with yep. with updated taxes and i know with like landlord insurance right not yep. regular home insurance landlord insurance just say i'm 2500 bucks all in per month that's principal mm -hmm. interest taxes insurance all that stuff right um <clears throat> now the next thing i'm going to do it depends how hard you want to stress test the deal. I try to break every deal, honestly, uh, pretty aggressively before I'm willing to purchase it. Um, mm -hmm. But then <clears throat> the next thing I'll do is I'll add, you know, whatever 10% of, you can add 10% of your gross or your mm -hmm. prepayment, whichever you want. So say 500 bucks, I'll think mm -hmm. of as CapEx, right? So capital expenses, yep. I'm pre-planning for a broken furnace and AC. Now I'm at three grand, yep. right? Uh, I don't have to account for vacancy like I would on a long-term rental because that's already built in to the gross number. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what else am I missing here? Oh, then I need to put in software, right? I use a ton of software to run our stuff, so I don't have to do it personally. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what that is. We'll just call it 300 bucks a month. So now I'm at mm -hmm. 3,300 bucks a month. Say I'm at five grand gross, minus that 3,300. I know average 1,700, right? I'm sure I missed something in there. Um, yep. But yeah that's i mean generally speaking how we go about it okay awesome and so what do you how do you come across so when you come across a property do you say okay my multiple strategies are the short-term rental do i mm -hmm. do i do you account for the long term as well or just for a mid-term rental yeah totally so what i would like on a single family home i would look at traditionally i would look at short and long term and now I have a friend who's like the midterm, midterm rental master. So that's like a new mm -hmm. thing for me to be learning in the last few months. It's pretty intuitive. Gotcha. Previously, I would just do short and long term on single family because those are the things that made the most sense for me. Um, <clears throat> and I just run those two models essentially. And then at the end of the day, I also want to own a thing in a place that I like because that, yeah. that not everybody has to do that, right? I just yeah, yeah because the thing is, like is that, the thing okay, I own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be like, you know what? I'm gonna block out some some time, and now I got a sure. place where I can go vacation. You know, so yes, which is what I thought I would do. It's difficult to for me to want to go these places because, like, now I'm not making revenue in those times. But yeah, I mean, personally, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are like, dude, I don't give a shit where I buy investment properties as long as they, as long as they produce enough cash. And I'm to some mm -hmm. degree in that camp, but like, you know, especially on single family stuff, like I kind of want to like it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I would go short term, run it that way. Long term, what's my worst case scenario? 
And then I'd look at like, hey, if I got to flip it or not really flip it, but say I have to sell it, you know, what's the mm -hmm. worst case scenario? If I can accept the worst case scenario, then I'm down. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Um, so, and then you, with the purchase price, you just make sure that you can, you, what, what kind of return are you looking for? for say the worst sure. case scenario or a long term or a short term or are you looking for a couple hundred bucks uh for the worst case scenario are you looking mm -hmm. uh to best case scenario a couple grand i mean what sure what is the profit yeah like? so <clears throat> yeah that's a great question for long-term rentals i don't own any long-term rentals personally my my business partner austin has a whole portfolio of those before we started doing short term together i'm sure right. i'll own long-term rentals like Apartments are appealing. So if I was looking at long term, I'd want a hundred bucks per door minimum. Um, short term, I don't really have a number in mind to be honest. Uh, they make a lot of money, so I haven't really had to. I haven't really had to ask establish a low number because I'm pretty gotcha. satisfied with the ones we purchased. I think mm -hmm. I'd want to at least make a grand per month on that. Those like minimum. There mm -hmm. is, you know, especially if you're not utilizing all the software and systems we're using like that could end up being a lot of work. And so I would want it, I would want to be rewarded well, right? Like you got to yep. turn over the property every time somebody goes. And if you're not paying a professional cleaning company to do it, like that's going to work. So um, I don't really have a number, but I guess I definitely went, I would want a grand at least per door there. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, nah. Gary Corbin actually asked this, lots of good info. Um, what is midterm rentals? And I guess okay, we didn't cool. really cover that too much. So everybody knows what short-term rentals is. Everybody knows what long-term rentals are. What is short or mid-term rentals? Yeah. So I should have thought to say, people are asking this all the time, right? For clients and stuff in real estate sales. I think if short-term rentals is everything under 30 days, I don't let anybody go past 29 days on my short-term rentals because I'm kind of paranoid and I don't want them to have tenant rights because I don't want to go through the process of evicting them. So I think yep. a short term rental is 30 days and under, right? For me, it's 29 days and under. So I have a day of buffer. I think yep. of midterm as anything between 30 days. So one month and 12 months, less than that, I think of as a midterm rental. And then I think okay. of long term rentals as 12 plus months, right? Midterm rentals are not typically close to 12 months, right? There are a lot of times yep. like two, three, four, six months. This is typically yeah. travel nurses, travel medical people in general. This could be, mm -hmm. uh, whatever insurance like a lot of like fire damaged water damaged houses insurance will pay for something yep. to stay there other midterm rentals are professional athletes um all sorts of stuff like that so yeah okay that helps awesome yeah so that that really helps a lot of people out there and corporate rentals um you know but keep in mind it's it very follows the rules with short-term rentals where it's still fully furnished so that's why you can totally. ask for the higher number, you know, for a, a normal long-term rental that's looking for 1600 bucks, a midterm rental, you're probably looking at, you know, 26 to 3,600 bucks, you know, a month, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, am I off a little bit? I mean, is it close? No, to no, I, I, no, I think that's totally accurate. Yep. And okay. then like short-term rentals for me, like in a worst case, they're usually like, I mean, in a worst case scenario, they're double long-term rent. Like they're usually like four times somewhere in the two to four X of like long-term rent. So gotcha. Yes. is a very okay. vague general <laughs> number. <laughs> it all depends on the area, right? You know, it does totally. So, yep. It, it, it's hit and miss, you know, you go downtown Detroit and you might have some there, but you know, you go on the outskirts, I, unless you're close to Royal Oak, who knows how many is there. And, I haven't really looked at the market for short-term rentals here in our local area. So I don't know. There's a, um, dude, there's so many it's wild. Yeah. And it's because of good hospitals, like people bump up yeah, okay. against good hospitals, right? So the typical, yep. it's wild. The people typically think of short-term rentals as only vacation stuff, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is probably the bulk of it, right? Like it's nice to have one in a vacation area, but also like for short and midterm rentals, getting close to like uh, good hospitals is like a big deal. So gotcha. um, yeah, like Royal Oak Woodward Corridor, uh, mm -hmm. Royal Oak Ferndale, that area, there are a yep. lot of short-term rentals, dude. So many. Yeah. I grew up there. Ferndale. Wait, did I, I say Ferndale? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. I grew it's up off Spencer street in Ferndale. 
No so. kidding. Dude, we yeah. owned a gym at uh, That's where our second gym was. Oh, nice. What was the name of it? It was Rise Athletics. Well, we had oh, Rise okay. Athletics in Farmington Hills, and then Rise Athletics Ferndale was that location. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome.